if you haven't done it, you really should because it, it's transformative. It's embodied. Your body is there. Um, and, it, and I think that um, for me, a lot of times somebody will say like, is this just a toy? Is this just a game? Like, what can you do with this? And you'll be like, well, did you think, you know, if you take somebody um, from say like a poor neighborhood and they don't get a chance to go and travel the world, they can put this headset on and they can be anywhere. Right. And it's like, that's, that's a cool example. Um, well, what about somebody who they're living in a rural area, they're looking for a job. There are jobs that, that need to be filled, but they, they can't train on the equipment they need to train on. Well, with VR, no matter where you live, you can train on ex equipment of all kinds, including I was talking to the DJ. <laughs> There's an amazing uh, app called TriVexR where you can learn how to be a DJ without the expensive equipment, things like that. And so when you, and if I, when you give somebody an example and another example and another example, for instance, if you're a nurse, you might have to deal with a really angry patient who's like coming at you and swearing at you and being really hostile and you have to figure out how to de-escalate the situation. And so there's another example. And for me, it was like, once you start thinking about this, suddenly it, like the dam breaks in my head and I'm thinking, you can do anything. Like this is, it's really, and, and it's empowered for people. So my whole background has always been in education or healthcare because I believe that's where we make people our best, their best self. Um, and I think that there's a, a ton of potential to, for people to, to do things, you know, to extend their, their minds, to go places they've never been, to extend their hearts, to be empathetic to other different people, and, and to extend what they could do with their hands, like to, to practice anything you might have to do to, between CPR or driving a truck or anything in between. Yo, plug me in! about four months ago uh, in April. And really, I really just wanted to take conversations that I was already having, you know, with uh, like-minded individuals and just put it on the platform. So we got Brian here. Brian is a, a XR, VR guru. I don't know who knows <laughs> much about VR, but um, we gonna dive in, we gonna plug in. We just, I'm just having a regular conversation with Brian. And then if you have any questions, if you have any questions, please text 267-701. Five three nine zero. We gonna get your question asked by Brian. Hey, I'll even take two questions though. Only two questions. So the best two questions get answered. So two six seven seven zero one five three nine zero. Nice. nice. This is awesome. I, I've always wanted to be introduced for that song, so right. thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, <laughs> In the horn you, section. You. <laughs> nah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's great. So this is the first, you know, official uh, Edu Vibe Fest. So, you know, this is the first. Next year, we're going to do it even bigger, right? Next year, yeah. we're going to have some, some VR products and some XR products for you to kind of play around with. But Brian is going to kind of, you know, he's going to sauce us up a little bit, right? And get us kind of <laughs> introduced uh, to the field, right? So yeah, so I guess let's just start off, right? I'm not going to lie, right? Uh, I know what VR is, but kind of hearing XR and your, your brand, your company, I'm like, what exactly is XR, right? So let's, let's just uh, plug in, right? What is, what is XR? What, just, just plug in our guests, like, None of us know what knows what this is. Plug us in more about the, uh, about the field. Sure, absolutely. So if you can think of a, you know reality as we know it uh, without any digital element whatsoever, mm -hmm. and then you can think on the other end a fully vi digital version of the world where it completely replaces the environment you're in, you know maybe the body you have, etc. Um, and that would be virtual reality. Um, augmented reality, if you start dialing that back a little bit, it, augmented reality is mostly the world that's around you now, um, but with a little bit of digital sort of brought into that. Um, and I think about it as being, people talk about immersive technology. I think two key ideas are about space, um, so being in some sort of spatial environment, um, and then also the body. Uh, and so I think this is, when we think about computing, almost every form of computing we've had is like, a flat rectangle. <laughs> and when you see that, you can't unsee it. It's like your phone is a flat rectangle, a big movie screen is a flat rectangle, a TV, a computer, a laptop, an iPad. And then suddenly when you think, well, this is a little different. It's something, it's something spatial and it includes sort of almost the opposite of your body, right? When you move your head to the left, it goes right. That's yeah. Okay. Wow. So, um, so XR then is all the R's. It's like the variable X. Um, yeah. And the guy who came up with that term actually is, is from Raleigh. 
Um, Robert Rice is the, the creator of that. Okay. So tell, tell us a little bit more about your, um, you know, I, I met you at uh, kind of like a networking group you had with, mm -hmm. with your XR group. Kind of tell us more about like your, uh, your community, what you're kind of doing in the XR space. Because our guests want to plug in, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've seen VR, I've, I've played around with like a Microsoft Hololens before. It was nice. Pretty dope. And um, so our, our guests want to plug in. So how, plug us in more with your group. Sure, absolutely. So uh, we started a group called NCXR, which is just North Carolina XR. Um, and so it's an industry that have a lot of people doing interesting things. And North Carolina has all these big cities, you know, um, it would take, for people who are not from North Carolina, seven hours to drive from one end to the other um, or something like that. Um, and there's all these different cities that are doing things, but they're not connected. And so I was at a, a conference out in Silicon Valley with a friend of mine from here, and she and her boyfriend have been uh, building things, Cos and Christie, um, in the XR space for some time. Um, and she's from Charlotte. And then we met two people from Charlotte who talked about um, XR groups that they were part of. And she's also from Charlotte <laughs> in the industry and didn't know about it. And so I was like, we need to bring this, these people together, right? Uh, and so, and, and, and from Charlotte to the Triangle and Asheville and, and to the coast and everywhere else. Um, so NCXR is all about that. So there was a group that was a Triangle-based one that actually was around for years um, with COVID it stopped happening for a few years and we brought it back. So everybody's welcome to join. It's a meetup group. Um, and I hope we can get people those links easier than talking about it. But. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Let's, let's go back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. so we, have your, we have your resume, your amazing resume, right, mm -hmm. in the XR space. But where did this, like, where did this interest even, even come about? Where did, it, where did it come from? Oh, for me? Yeah. It's exciting. You know, today I was, I was talking to somebody and I was just doing some basic stuff um, in VR where I was just like, you know, making a note and moving it around and things like that. And, and I was just, there's such a joy to it. I don't know if you've ever been in virtual reality. It's one of these things that people, if you haven't done it, you really should because it, it's transformative. It's embodied. Your body is there. Um, and, it, and I think that um, for me, a lot of times somebody will say, like, is this just a toy? Is this just a game? Like, what can you do with this? And be like, well, did you think, you know, if you take somebody um, from, say, like a poor neighborhood and they don't get a chance to go and travel the world, they can put this headset on and they can be anywhere, right? And it's like, that's, that's a cool example. Um, well, what about somebody who they're living in a rural area, they're looking for a job. There are jobs that, that need to be filled, but they, they can't train on the equipment they need to train on. Well, with VR, no matter where you live, you can train on ex equipment of all kinds, including I was talking to the DJ. <laughs> There's an amazing uh, app called TriVexR where you can learn how to be a DJ without the expensive equipment, things like that. And so when you, and if I, when you give somebody an example and another example and another example, for instance, if you're a nurse, you might have to deal with a really angry patient who's like coming at you and swearing at you and being really hostile and you have to figure out how to de-escalate the situation. And so there's another example. And for me, it was like, once you start thinking about this, suddenly it, like the dam breaks in my head and I'm thinking, you can do anything. Like this is, it's really, and, and it's empowered for people. So my whole background has always been in education or healthcare because I believe that's where we make people our best, their best self. Um, and I think that there's a, a ton of potential to, for people to, to do things, you know, to extend their, their minds, to go places they've never been, to extend their hearts, to be empathetic to other different people, and, and to extend what they could do with their hands, like to, to practice anything you might have to do to, between CPR or driving a truck or anything in between. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely true. I know, uh, you know, a role I was in in my, uh, my past, I've used like the hollow ones and kind of working with. Mm -hmm. Another site, you know, you know, collaborating on different things, and uh, it was definitely a great tool. But yeah, that, that, that sounds amazing with the VR and XR, right? But that, that, what, what are the dangers? What are the dangers? I know with all of VR, XR, AI, everything that's out here right now, there has to be some type of dangers, right? So yeah. What, what, are the, what are the dangers that, you know, we might face if someone is just, say somebody leaves here and they, they go buy a, a VR, XR set, they just heard what you said, like, oh, Brian just, Everything in. I want to yeah. get a set for myself. Well, what's the danger they might run into? I would say that privacy is one of the, the questions. Um, so yeah. you're getting um, all this data about somebody. You can actually tell a lot about somebody by just, if you knew nothing but the way they move their arms and legs, you, could, you might actually be able to identify who it was, for instance. 
If you had nothing but their eye tracking data, you might know that they have a neurological condition um, or that they're drunk or that, you know, that there's some other thing has happened to them. So there's a lot of sort of invasive um, elements there that we have to be very careful of as we're thinking it's like way more than the data that's being collected on social media and other places. Um, so definitely there's been um, some concern there. There's some basic things like if you... Uh, Put on a VR headset and you start playing some awesome game. Like I like to exercise in VR. I'll swing my arm around and whack it into a wall or something. You know, like the, the, you could you could hurt yourself physically in, in a way like that. And so there's a, there's a range of different things. Definitely, there are, there are risks. There are times you wouldn't necessarily um, want to put someone in VR. Someone could have a traumatic experience. Um, you know, the, so for for instance, kids if they were in a horror game, it's so much more impactful. Everything you do in VR, it's it's hard to explain, but it's like it's like you're there. And so it, there's a difference between seeing something on a screen that's flat and and, and actually being there, and and that could actually be a little traumatizing too. Yeah. So you have to think about the the best use of it. Okay, man, the universe is working, right? Someone just sent in the question. About the <laughs> nice. Right? Oh, okay, cool. So yeah. so we have a question, right? So how is XR approaching security? in the virtual reality space in the day and age of IoT? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, IoT is actually, that's a great, um, uh, those are almost two questions, I guess, but yeah. one of the things that, uh, that I like about XR too is that it's, it's converges with all other technologies, right? So if you're thinking about the convergence of the, the physical world and the, the digital world, IoT is amazing, right? So just like you might be able to talk to Alexa and have it turn on your lights or something like that, um, the Internet of Things is, like in your job, is all this automation in, uh, in a scientific laboratory. Um, or you could, you know, interact with robots where you sort of like just maybe with your, the way you looked across the room and the robot would move in that direction or something. But yeah, that's a lot of data that could be leaking out, right? And so, and um, all of that data has to be transmitted to and from the headset on a constant basis. So you need to, it needs to be secured on the headset, it needs to be secured in transit, and it needs to be secured in the cloud. Um, so all those are different places that uh, somebody has to think about the security aspects of it. Mm. Wow, wow. So would you say that, okay, current current days, right, 2023, talking about different security problems, different issues, what, what is something that you think needs to be kind of like worked on to, to fix this? Right? I think it's going to be... <laughs> Non-stop, <laughs> and the need to, to come up and, and to follow yeah, it, right? Like, yeah. the, with the tech is just going to keep changing and evolving, and and get more advanced. And at the same time, we're going to have to do much more to protect the security. So it's it's really going to be at, at every step. So, for instance, one of the things that's been interesting to me is edge computing. Um, so edge computing is how can you take, and this is really important actually for, for VR. So if you think about VR, all the challenges. Um, everybody's a critic, right? So if you see like an iPad for the first time, you're like, this is amazing, I can swipe. But when you put on a VR headset, you see this like hologram sitting in front of you, you're like, meh, the colors could be better. <laughs> or, like, yeah, because everybody's an, is an expert at reality, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so there's, there's that element of it. Um, so um, edge computing, the idea behind it is, you know, you, if you can take some stuff off of this headset, um, then you can make it lighter and it would, um, you don't have to have a fan come on and be loud it, and so you make it um, and it'd be more comfortable. Um, you can have more battery life. You can do all this other stuff if you could take some of the computing that you otherwise would have to do on, on the headset and put it somewhere else. So you could do that like in a cloud, you know, somewhere out in the data center somewhere, but there's, then you have to deal with the problems of speed, like how fast can you get that data? So one of the really different things about VR is if you're in a Zoom meeting or if you're listening to audio or something and suddenly something stops or if it's glitchy or if it has to speed up, um, you don't really care too much, it's fine. But if you're in VR and you turn your head and the world doesn't turn, then people vomit. <laughs> and that's, that's just basic biology. It's the, uh, you know, your system basically, it, it comes down to like evolution. Like, like if you were to turn your head and suddenly the world isn't doing what you think it's supposed to do, then you probably ate a poison mushroom and you should vomit. And basically that's, that's sort of what happens with VR. Um, so as a result, we need to uh, bring in edge computing, which is like computer that's not on your head and not quite way out there in the cloud. That's something in between. And so something a little closer by, so it's a little bit faster to get to, maybe not as powerful as a data center, but more powerful than what's on your head. But come back to that idea of security. Now you're thinking about one more place that security becomes an issue, right? Not only on the headset, not only in the cloud, but also in this intermediate spot. And so, again, it's going to be this like sort of endless process of chasing that down. Yeah. Okay. 
we got questions coming in, bro. All right, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> 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 so this is an interesting question, right? So you know, I, I work within the biotech pharmaceutical industry, right? Mm -hmm. And one of our guests wants to know, you know, the future of you know the pharmaceutical companies are moving towards automation, right? Mm -hmm. So the how is XR and virtual you know labs fitting into that? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I like to think about is XR is more than one thing. So I'm, if for those who can't hear me, I'm holding out a hand with all my fingers out on one side. And uh, that is, you know, it could be AR, it could be VR, it could be something you're doing in your browser, it could be something you're doing on your phone, it could be high end, it could be low end, it could be 360 video, or it could be um, something that's computer generated. So there's many things that XR is. On the other hand, there's many things that an organization does. So say a pharmaceutical company, they're gonna be doing research and development, they're gonna be doing outreach for clinical trials, they're gonna be doing you know, automation within a, a laboratory setting, they're gonna be training their, um, yeah, their workers. There's so many different things that they're doing. So I think about this as like, again, my hands are splayed. <laughs> oh, 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 we're in the left hand of many things and the right hand of many things and all the different possible then combinations of how you could combine it. There's, it's almost like mind boggling how you could do it. Um, but then you just have to pick the best use cases. Um, and so I think that um, we're seeing a lot of traction in particular areas. So uh, virtual reality in particular, there's a Stanford researcher whose name is Jeremy Balenson, and he has this model he calls the DICE model, D-I-C-E. So D is dangerous. It's, that's a, if something's otherwise dangerous to do in the real world, it's good to do it in VR. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like, you know, a chemistry lab where something blows up, you know, that, uh, or someone practicing, um, you know, to be a, a firefighter or something like that, where they, that's, that's a dangerous thing, better to train in VR. The second one is impossible. Like, can you get inside of someone's bloodstream? Well, no. <laughs> so can you go to Mars? You can't do those things very easily. But again, in, in pharmaceutical industry, you want to see what that uh, that compound looks like. You want to see how it connects with something else, how a, a virus might come into the body. Um, you know, things blowing through and through your bloodstream. So that would be something otherwise impossible or VR could play a role. Um, counterproductive. Um, can't think of a great example here, but the, I think kind of what I mentioned before, if, if a patient's coming at somebody and being really angry and you have to deal with that anger yeah. and de-escalate, that's counterproductive to make someone so angry that they would come at you, um, but you could do it in VR. And then expensive. Some things would just be wildly expensive to do and, and you could do it in VR. So I think that's a, that's a key place. So I would say that like, employee training, um, research and development, those would be some key places that you'd see um, VR and XR playing a role. Okay. Yeah, any uh, products that you might you know recommend that someone can, can, can try out? What's, what's a what's a VR product that you would recommend for someone that's trying to want to start out tech something up? It, it kind of depends what people are into. So, um, like I said, my favorite thing to do is a game called Supernatural. It's not even a game; it's a, it's exercise. And and there okay. are these coaches that that stand across from you, um, and they play just amazing music of all kinds. Uh, so you can listen to hip hop if you wanted to, but you can listen to classical music if you wanted to, or 1980s ska, you know, you can listen to just about anything you want um, while you're exercising. And basically it's like you have two baseball bats in your hand and you're swinging them around and, and then these triangles come flying at you and you dive around and things and they're coming from all directions. It's a little hard to describe, um, but, uh, but, but you get a real workout. And for me, I have to say that I was doing this during COVID and not only was I otherwise not going to the gym, so this was giving me exercise, which I really needed and, and it was good for my physical and mental state, but also the coach in there was like, you can do it, You're, you can do it athlete, you got this. And just having somebody who is like, and I knew it was just a recording, but still, having somebody who is like so positive and giving me that message um, really brought a lot to me, especially during sort of dark times of COVID. Um, so that's one of my favorites. Um, but uh, you know, you might try out, um, it, one of the easiest things to do, for instance, is um, Mozilla, which makes Firefox, also makes Mozilla Hubs. And so that is a free multi-person chat space that you can go into with avatars and float around. And you can create your own custom worlds for it if you wanted to. It's super easy, it's completely free, and it works on every device ever. So if you don't need a VR headset, you can do it on your, on your laptop. Okay, okay. So it seems like you've got a, got a lot going on with the thing of VR space, right? Like how do you how do you balance like your roles as a, as a leader with your you know your XR brand? You also have your um, own consulting company that you started as well, and um, you know being an educator as well. How do you balance all this stuff? Uh, <laughs> I do my best, to have, but actually, I mean all these things. So one of the things. Go straight answer. I don't yeah. Know about it. Well, I mean so. <laughs> 
It's kind of funny for me. So for years, I didn't really have a, a particular focus. I have three master's degrees because I couldn't decide. <laughs> I spent forever at UNC and just, you know, and the, but the, um, but now I feel like I have a focus, I have a passion, which is really immersive learning. Um, and I feel like, again, learning is something that makes people like a better version of who they are. It's empowering. Um, and in education, it's, it's such an amazing place to go. And not everybody has to go to college by far. You know, um, a lot of people, they should be going to the trades. They should be doing whatever makes sense for them. And that's actually another thing I love about it, too, is, is that people can learn to, to uh, you know, operate heavy machinery or they could be you know learning to become a doctor I mean, really everything in between um so it's exciting to me the idea that people feel empowered like that uh, uh, that's, that's a great thing. so how, how can our uh, you know our audience our listeners how can everyone plug in with brian if they want to learn more about xr and you have your consulting company as well can you share a little bit about that for us yeah thank you so um so my consulting company is called dream space i help out people when they're thinking about immersive learning and how they want to do that. And so that's kind of on two sides. One side is like the implementation side. So how do we choose the hardware, the software, the services? And then anytime you're coming into an organization, you have to think about like the entire socio-technical environment. Like, so like, what other tech do they have? Like, how does the security work? What do we, what's the life cycle of this? And how are we gonna deal with change management? Because people don't like change. And how do we, in the case of like, how do we teach educators? How do we teach staff? So that's one side of what I do is like, how do we implement it at an organization? And then the other side, um, I know a lot of people in the industry, uh, like from hardware, software, um, marketing, sales. And so for people who are trying to come into the industry and sell them on that side. Um, but I think the best way to connect um, is I, um, I the, the, what I do for that side of things, the consulting is my for, uh, you know, for money <laughs> to pay the bills side of things. But I do a lot that's not for money. So I go to, I'm, at UNC, I'm a XR entrepreneur in residence. And, and again, I'm trying to, back at UNC, excited about thinking the entire campus and getting people excited about it. And um, and for everybody else, uh, NCXR. So join us if you're interested in this. We'll have our next meeting actually, it's gonna be November 8th. Um, we haven't said anything quite out about it, but save the date. It'll be at the American Underground in Durham, um, and it'll be about education in XR. So my goal is actually to do XR plus health, XR plus education, XR plus Internet of Things. It'll always be XR plus something. Um, and to try to build that network of networks. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. So, man, Brian, you you know, I really connected with you because you're you're really a visionary, right? So I, I connect with your vision. I'm a visionary as well, you know, kind of just seeing things before it's actually done, right? So I know this question is kind of off script, but like, <laughs> you know, when it's all said and done, what do you want your legacy to be? Sorry, which one's the legacy? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I see it everywhere. I, I really feel it's XR plus everything. I feel like it's every discipline uh, uh, that you could study. It is every you know profession that somebody has. And if you're thinking about how to get into it, this is kind of cool. You don't need to be a tech expert. You just have to do what you're doing and, and think about what's the magic version of that? Like what's the what's the Harry Potter version of being a surgeon? It would be being able to see through your patient to be able to do that. We could do that with XR. What's the Harry Potter version of being, you know, the magic of, you know, of, of being a a teacher of anything. I saw one where it was like somebody was like cleaning up the floor and it was boring to vacuum. So they, they put digital coins all over the floor and they could vacuum them up and make it into a game. <laughs> and it's like, if you start with that vision, like what is this magical thing I want to try to get done? You can usually work back. And, and we did this sometimes, like we were building an app for um, UNC hospitals. So there were kids, uh, they're you know, stuck in this, this same floor for sometimes a full month at a time. They're feeling physically bad, they're feeling mentally bad. And the question is, how do we get them up and moving? Because if they got up and moving, that would be better for their physical health, their mental health, their social interactions. And so it was like, what if we created a game? You know, what if we created an augmented reality game that makes it fun to be in the same hallway again and again and again? And you build in elements where they have to talk to the nurse to get the next piece. And the, and the game is like, you know, find a fox. And then the fox lost his boots and you have to go find the boots. And, you know, and so suddenly this boring hallway comes alive. And this kid who otherwise would be sort of stuck in bed and not feeling great comes alive as well. Um, so yeah, I th that's the sort of thing that I think is most inspiring. Man, you, you definitely inspired me. I think you inspired everyone in our audience as well. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate you plugging in on the STEM Plug podcast today for another episode. Um, it's amazing. We're going to keep plugging in, keep diving in with XR. Um, so keep plugging in. 
Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh,